people are finally starting to legitimize that idea that you can get business from online. With social media, the people that have the most expertise are not your marketing agencies run by 50 year olds. It's the people that are actually using it. Don't you wish you would have learned a little bit more about how you could make money when you were a teenager? Absolutely. It's one of those things that's like, you know, you're, when you're in school, you're, you're, you're learning a whole bunch of things, but you're never taught how to make money. And I feel like when you're a teenager, especially, you're always trying to figure out how do you make some money? Mm -hmm. So in this video, I wanted to go over 10 ways that you could start making money when you were younger, particularly as a teenager, because we've never made a video like that before. And then we've gotten a handful of comments of people asking for that. So I wanted to go over 10 ways that I came up with. Awesome. That you can start uh, earning money right now, even if you are a teenager and don't have that much money. And the first one that I want to go over is one that I used to do, especially. It's working in the wedding business. Uh, the wedding business is a very, very lucrative business. And if you can learn a skill, whether it's photography or videography, or even if you don't have a skill, you can go work with the DJs, assist them, uh, help them move their speakers. You can make a lot of money. You're working on weekends, working in the wedding business. So what I used to do when I was in the wedding business is I used to work for Indian weddings particularly, and I played a drum called the toll. And I would go, uh, if I worked in the mornings, so Indian weddings have this thing in the morning, it's, a, it's a, called a brat. It means the guy's side is coming to the girl's side. And so I would play the drum there. And when I first started, I, I was actually in middle school when I first started, I was charging about 50 bucks. That was for an hour of time. And I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I sucked at playing, which is why I charged very little. But as I started to get better, I started charging, I think it was, $300 or $250 minimum for one hour. And so it was like, I go in the morning, I go there for one hour and I walk away with 250 or $300. And it's like super easy because I know what I'm doing. And then in the evenings, if they wanted me to do it at the reception, that was another 350 bucks. So that's kind of how I started working. And then when I started doing that, I got to know a lot of the DJs. And then that opened up a new kind of revenue source in the wedding business because uh, all the every single DJ needs help setting up the DJ equipment. Every single DJ wants help setting up their speakers. Nowadays, at least the DJs that I work with, because I'm still friends with a lot of people that work in the entertainment business, the wedding business. I mean, they're doing a lot more things. They're setting up dance floors, lights, all these things to make weddings nice, and you can help do that. And it's, it's very lucrative, and it, it, a lot of people don't even think about this industry but you got to understand, I mean, the wedding business is one of the most lucrative industries out there that's recession proof because the whole thing is you only get married once, hopefully. You always put the hopefully <laughs> at the end of it, right? Asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but because of that, people spend a lot of money on their weddings. And pretty much everything is a premium for, for weddings. I got married recently and yeah, I can definitely attest to that. I, I got a lot of discounts because I know a lot of vendors in the wedding space, but man, I mean, we paid a lot. And you got married too recently. Yeah, no, it's, I It's understand. expensive. I understand. It's very expensive. <laughs> and so this is an opportunity for you to kind of come into that industry and start earning some money. The question is, how do you do it? Mm. Yeah, because if, if, let's say you, you know how to take some pictures. It's kind of hard for you to just kind of enter the wedding industry as a 15 year old, say, ah, I got a camera. Can I shoot pictures for your wedding? Most people are probably not going to agree to that because they want someone who's going to actually capture their wedding. So what you can do is go and contact people who are already doing this. And you can, I mean, I know particularly the Indian wedding industry because Indian weddings are like notoriously large. So Indian people, uh, kind of a little bit of a backstory. My family's from a state in India called Punjab and Indian people really spend money in two places, their education and weddings. <laughs> the, this is where their money goes. And weddings in the Indian culture, it's like, it's a massive, massive thing. And to me, like growing up, uh, the idea of a small wedding was 250 people. Wow. If you have 250 people at a wedding, it's a small wedding. And now it's just a different way of looking at things. And so culturally, Weddings are a massive thing and business. We're talking about the business in the Indian culture. So even if you're not Indian, you know, it, it's not a bad place to start because I know a lot of 
Indian wedding vendors across the country. And every single one has the same problem. They don't have enough work. And if you go, even if you're not a photographer, videographer, DJ, even if you go to any one of them, you just start searching, go to Instagram, search for Indian wedding photographers, videographers, DJs, reach out to them. Even if you don't have any skills, say, hey, I will intern with you for two weeks or a month, whatever, for free. I just want to learn and I want to help. You're going to get a lot of yeses. They're going to say, sure, <laughs> we would love to have an intern come join us because it's not like super hard. Um, but then you can learn. And now if you have a passion for photography or videography, then obviously reach out to those people. But again, go there and learn for a few weeks and, and they will teach you. Uh, these people that are, especially the bigger ones that are doing this full time, they will sit there, they will teach you, especially if, they're, if you're not charging them to learn how to, to learn how to do it. And you can make very good money as a high schooler, a, a middle schooler, a college person. Middle schooler is going to be a little bit harder un unless you can you know, do something else. But high schooler or a college person to just go there and assist them. So the wedding industry is a very lucrative industry that I feel like when it comes to side hustles, it's always overlooked, but it's so lucrative, man. Mm -hmm. It is so lucrative. The second way that you can make money as a teenager, I would say is building websites. Mm -hmm. And this is another one that uh, I used to do. And <laughs> I actually wrote this one down because I did a video recently. Uh, I forgot what the topic was, but I was talking about how you can invest, I think it was a thousand dollars. And one of the things I talked about is, you know, investing in yourself, maybe creating a side hustle, like uh, doing websites for people, building websites. And one of the comments was a guy who said, what kind of business would hire a high schooler to build their website? I'm like, I don't think you understand how many businesses there are that would hire a high schooler that can build their website. Because first off, when I talk about building a website, it doesn't have to be that hard. Like for a lot of businesses, they don't need a custom coded WordPress website. For a lot of businesses, you can go on to like one of those builders, Shopify, Weebly, Wix. I don't even remember what there are, but there's just so many like pre-built templates that are super simple, but you have a lot of mom and pop businesses, smaller companies that don't have web presences. And just having that website, even if they don't get a lot of traffic from it, they want that credibility. They want to have a decent looking website. And even if they have a website, if it's completely ugly, because you still have a lot of those like HTML ugly websites <laughs> out there, just go there and present them with the idea of building them a website. And you, you could charge, I, I'll, I'll tell you because I did this for a little while, I think I was charging like 250 bucks. Uh, and this was years ago. And this is a long time ago. I'm sure you can charge more now, but I was charging like 250 bucks to, to build someone like a Weebly website. And it took only like a few hours of my time because I would ask them like, you know, what text do you want? Send me your pictures. That was the hardest part. Always like, give me the images that, that you want. Like, oh, I don't have any images. <laughs> so we'd have to like kind of figure out how to do that. Um, and the text, but once you have that information, it's literally just like you, you just plug it in there. And a lot of people just don't know how to do it. And it's such a huge opportunity because now you can just, you, you start looking at your neighborhood, go, go to the local businesses there, see if they have a website. If they don't go in there, talk to them, see what they do, get to know the owner and say, Hey, I, I like building websites. Can I build you one? And they'd be like, Oh, wait, really? Like how much? And then, you know, you start, you kind of just, you don't want to go in there and just be that salesperson and say, Hey, I build websites. Let me build you a website half of this is not just what you're doing, but how you do it. So you got to go up to the business owner, talk to them, get to know them, be friendly and say, you know, I, I, uh, I was on your, your website and it looked not that nice. Uh, I would love to kind of show you some of the sites that I've done before. Even if you haven't done any sites, I mean, you can build some templates as you start to build your portfolio, it becomes a lot easier, but you just got to kind of show them that value. And as you present that value, well, now it's all of a sudden it's a new monetization opportunity and, and you have just built a web building company. And what you can do then is as you start to grow, you can go on to something like Upwork and find a web builder. And this, this person can be overseas. And as you start to get more clients, 
you say, all right, well, I don't have the time to not constantly keep building all these sites myself, mm. but I can train somebody, right? You get your first like almost employee freelancer and you can just train somebody overseas and pay them hundred bucks, 150 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever it is. I, I don't know what the going rate is, depending on how intricate it is. You pay them a little bit of money to do it and you might charge a thousand dollars. Wow. And now all you're doing is you're just trying to attract more clients. And now all of a sudden you built a new business. You got an employee that's doing it for you, doing the work of building the sites. The employee's happy because they're, they're getting business. They're, they're getting a fair rate to build the sites. You're the one that's attracting the clients and you're getting that spread. So another, e uh, not easy, nothing is easy, but another, accessible way for you to start earning money even as a teenager uh, by building the websites. Number three, I wrote building an agency. This one is fun. This one's interesting because this opportunity was not there when you, when you and I were in high school. <laughs> building an agency, meaning SEO agency, a digital marketing agency, an advertising agency, a, a, a marketing, any, anything in that marketing space. Going back to that kind of business talk that I was talking about, a lot of business owners, even nowadays, do not have any sort of digital presence. Now, five years ago, like th this was popular, but the, the tough thing five years ago when people tried to do this was you'd have to sell a business on the idea that you can get clients from the internet. Like, uh, and it sounds crazy. Like five years ago, I think most people under the age of 35 knew that, hey, there's something going on, on the internet. You can get clients on the internet. <laughs> but nowadays it's like, I think people are finally starting to realize that, hey, I can get clients off the internet. Doesn't matter what my business is. People are finally starting to legitimize that idea that you can get business from online. And so that hurdle is over. But the second hurdle is you do have a lot of people that are doing these SEO agencies, these marketing agencies, but there's still so much room for more. Like drive down your neighborhood, drive down your city, look at the local mom and pop shops, look at the local businesses. First, go on their website if they don't have a website. Second, go onto their social media, go to their Instagram page. If they don't have an Instagram page, well, there's your first sign. If they have an Instagram page with 42 followers and it's all pictures of their cat on their business page, <laughs> that's the second red flag. Then you can also check out things like TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. And that's where you can start to see where the opportunities are. And do you want to know who understands Twitter? I mean, sorry, not Twitter, TikTok more than, I can't even remember the name. Do you want to know who understands TikTok more than anybody else? <laughs> Young people. Gen Z, yeah. Teenagers. So like, and it's funny because I think sometimes we create these barriers for ourselves. We tell ourselves, oh, uh, I'm not good enough. I don't have the skills. I don't have the expertise. You know, <laughs> with social media, the people that have the most expertise are not your marketing agencies run by 50 year olds. It's the people that are actually using it because these are the consumers of the social media. And so like, for example, our TikTok right now, uh, one of our main editors for TikTok is a high schooler. He's my cousin, <laughs> you know, and he's doing this. Uh, the reason I reached out to him because is because he is on TikTok all the time. And I know he likes video editing. I was like, okay, what do you like about TikTok? And he starts telling me all these things that I have no idea what he's talking about. And I was like, okay, you want to edit our TikToks? Yeah. How much? All right, deal. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like I, I know you know it. You, it's the people that are using it are the people that understand it. And that has to be your selling point. Like, yeah, I'm not a, a sophisticated marketing agency with a suit and tie, but I'm going to charge you a whole lot less than what those marketing agencies are going to charge you. And I'm a consumer of this platform. I'm a consumer of this. So I know exactly how it works. I know how to get people interested. I know how to get people attracted. And there's a selling pitch. Now yeah. what you can do is there are so many different ways that you can monetize on this and you have to educate yourself. So you have the SEO side, you have the paid advertising side, and then you have the organic marketing side and you kind of have to know where you want to be because it it's you can't do all of them at once especially if you're just one person you have to be a little bit tailored if you want to really monetize on it and capitalize on it so starting with the seo side seo means search engine optimization that means you have a blog and your blog is going to be ranked on google every single website in the world wants to be ranked on google on the first page but most of them are not doing a good job at it and 
this is where you can provide an opportunity to the companies if you can show them that you can help them with that. Now, this is probably going to be the most difficult one, the SEO side, because SEO is such a complex and complicated animal. But you can, even as just one person, you, you can provide some sort of support, some education, and maybe writing articles to help them build their SEO. But in order for you to do that, you have to be educated on the topic of SEO. So, I mean, the first thing you do is you just go out and watch YouTube videos. Watch as many YouTube videos as you can. And you're going to realize either you're interested in this or you're going to hate it. Like, you have to be interested in it because if you don't like it, then it's going to be very hard for you to build a, a side hustle around this. Watch YouTube videos. Then start doing it yourself. Maybe you create your own blog and you start ranking it. That is now your, your proof of concept. Back in the day, uh, you know, if you, you look at licensing products, the reason why people would would create a product with the technology that they created wasn't so that they could just build the biggest product in the world. It's so they could show it as a proof of concept. Then they could take this technology to other companies, bigger companies, and say, hey, Nike, look, I sold this apparel that people like. How about you license this technology from me? So now what you're doing is you're doing that proof of concept with your your blog. Or if your friend has a website, you you, you try to just partner with somebody and you prove it. Once you do that, now you go to different businesses and say, hey, look, I've done this before. This is why you should hire me. And now when you go and you pitch to these businesses, the key is you have to be, I, I don't want to say aggressive, but you have to be showing your value. And what I mean by that is you don't want to just sign up on a $500 one time, that's it. You really want to think of this as more of an agency, even if you're a teenager. And you're going to be like, oh, but I don't have the expertise. I don't know. I, I know that. But that doesn't mean that you cannot get the most value out of what you do because what you don't realize is the business has no idea what to do. Mm -hmm. And you know way more than them. And so you, it takes time to build it. And so what you should do is, like for a minimum, ask for a three-month contract. $500 a month, $1,000 a month. $1,500 a month, just depending on how many different things that you're doing, you can start small, nothing wrong with that. You, as you start to learn, get more clients, you can charge more. Like, I I get it. You know, when you're starting off, it's always hard to ask for money. So, like even 50 bucks, like, oh, I, I think I'm asking for too much money. I, do I deserve 50 bucks? I don't know. Okay, take a deep breath. If the worst they can say is no, why not try it? So, you know, you, you have to understand that, you know, you are providing a lot of value. And if it wasn't you charging them 50 bucks or 500 bucks, the marketing agency is gonna charge them 10X that. <laughs> so get the client first, put them on at least a three month retainer, and then you have to manage your expectations. So, you, I mean, the best thing to do is under promise over deliver, and your under promise provides enough value to justify the price that you're charging. So if you're under promising, and that is more than enough value to justify your $500. Now you go there and you over deliver. So you have to, you have to manage those expectations in a way where you tell them, okay, here's what I'm going to do this, 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 and this, here's what you can expect. And with SEO, the tough thing is you don't see the results for a long time. So you manage those expectations. You go there, you over deliver, you show them the value and you say, Hey, would you like to renew? If we renew, we can do this, this, and this, and here's the results that we have, here's the success that we've done, and now you start to build your agency, and you have to can start bringing in more clients. On the, the paid advertising side, this one is a little bit easier in the sense that it's a shorter lifespan. With SEO, it takes a long time to really start seeing results. With paid advertising, I mean, you can start seeing results in a week, if it's working or if it's failing. But again, learning paid advertising is not easy. It, it's its own hurdle. So what do you do? First, start binge watching YouTube videos. There are so much content out there teaching how to do that. So start learning about Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, uh, Snapchat advertising, TikTok advertising. There's so much more. I don't even know if those like how their advertising works, but start learning about this type of different advertising. And now what you're doing is you are developing your skill set. This learning is you build that skill set, which then you can package up and market to these companies. So then you go to the local companies, and another great way to find these companies, by the way, is if you have like local fairs, business fairs, art fairs, um, 
trade fairs, go there. Those are like gold mines of small mom and pop companies trying to grow because they're going to these fairs, trying to get exposure. They're trying to get more business and they're all looking for new things. Now that's not, that's always the best place to pitch them because they're trying to to sell their products, but get to know them, talk to them, exchange business cards, tell them what you do. But, and that's the place where you can start building your leads, people that you can contact. So now with the paid advertising, what you're doing is you're trying to show that, Hey, I can help you get more sales, get more exposure, get more, um, likes on your social media, whatever it is. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do, but you have to, in order to get the best sales there is you got to know what they want first. Mm -hmm. Ask them, you know, what are your goals? Everyone will tell you like, yeah, I want to get more sales or, you know, I'm really trying to build the the amount of clicks on my website. I want to build our web traffic. I'm trying to build our social media presence because that will make us look more credible online. And it might sound weird. Like, doesn't everybody just want more sales? Yeah, everybody wants more sales, but sometimes people are more interested and just building that credibility on social media. Right. They say, I, I want to have 10,000 Instagram followers. And so uh, obviously that could also go on the organic route, but you can present this as an option. So if you know what their pain points are, you know what their, their goals are, this could be a solution for them. And if you know how to do the paid advertising, if you've gone through the YouTube videos, maybe you take a class or two, if you can afford them. Now you can package this up and now it's a way for you to start monetizing. You go to the businesses and you say the same thing. Hey, I want to run your paid advertising for you. I think I can do a great job. I've done this before. I know I'm only 17 years old, but I know how to do this. I've been doing this. And you, you have to just present that. Like, they're always concerned is going to be, how is a kid going to know how to do this? Well, if you address that concern right up front, they're going to feel way more confident because you're confident. Right. So you say, yeah, I know I'm 17, but I've done this before. And I know that I can get you results too. And that confidence is hard because you, you know, especially if you're just starting off, you don't always have the results to back it, but you have to go in with the confidence. That way you can start building the clientele, prove it, do it and do it again and again and again, and it'll get easier every single time. You gotta remember that the first client, the first sale, the first, everything is always the hardest. It always gets easier after that. The third one is now the organic side and the organic side is. How do you organically grow your Instagram following, your TikTok following, your your Twitter following, whatever it might be? This is gonna be, again, it's doable, but you have to be educated. How do you do it? Go watch some YouTube videos on how do you grow your Instagram page. Go watch some, uh, uh, go take a class on how to grow your social media following. Now, again, you take that education, you package it up, and you see how you can build some sort of formula, some sort of, program for three months where, Hey, month one, we're going to do this month two, we're going to do this month three, we're going to do this. And you go package it and market it to your clients. And what you don't want to do is go to these potential businesses and say, Hey, I could do this, this, or this. It's going to confuse them. Mm -hmm. Not every business is going to have the same needs. So you got to figure out what it is that you like first, because uh, you know, someone's going to, I don't like paid advertising. I, I'm not an advertising person. Is you have to be super analytical to like that. I'm not an analytical person. Mm -hmm. That's why I like being more creative. That's the way I, ju I just, my brain works. So if you like analytics, then maybe you're going to like the paid advertising better. If you like being more creative, maybe you're going to be on the content creation side on the more organic side. If you like writing, if you like that type of stuff, then go on to the SEO side. So you have to kind of know what you like and, and that's where it's doing your research, but that now all of a sudden, has become an opportunity for you to start generating money, real money as a teenager. And you, the, the best part is if you do it the right way, you can use your age as an advantage because you can show them that, Hey, you are a user of the product. And the reason why they should listen to you is because, well, young people are the dominating forces on social media and you understand trends, you understand how to make something go viral and you understand how it works. And if you can present that, especially to a business owner that has no digital presence, that has no social presence, I mean, they, they will understand that young people are the people that are using this and you have to show them how it can help them make money, how it can help them grow their brand, how it can help them grow their business. Well, we're moving. Yeah. Number four. The fourth way that you can make money, even when you're young, is through your labor. This would be things like mowing people's lawns, shoveling 
snow, raking leaves, cleaning and detailing cars, painting rooms. I don't know if I have anything else. Moving stuff. <laughs> There's apps that can help you with that too. Like with the moving stuff, there are apps that you can join that kind of like Uber where someone's looking for someone else to help move one thing to another room, move it to another place. So there's a bunch of apps that can help you with that. But again, another opportunity for you if you can present it and, and provide some sort of value. When I was, uh, I think I was really young when I started mowing my neighbor's lawns. But I, what I used to do is I used to just knock on literally my neighbor's doors and say, hey, um, can I mow your lawn for you? Or can I do your lawn this summer? Uh, I, th- I think I was charging like 10 bucks at the time. But again, this is a long time ago. And a lot of times, they would, I mean, they, they would just say yes because they knew me and uh, they were like, oh, yeah, why, why not save me some time? And so, you know, if you're in Arizona, California, you don't got a lawn, well, you don't <laughs> got to worry about that. But if you're, you know, in an area where you have lawns, that could be an opportunity. Mow your neighbor's lawns or start shoveling snow. Nobody, is, if you're in the Midwest, you're in the north area where you got a lot of snow, nobody wants to sit there and get stuck in a driveway on the way to work. And if you're a hustler and you're like, you know, I'll get up before school. I'll go shovel this person's snow. Talk to them. Ask them if they want it. Because if you see your neighbor always shoveling their snow, there's an opportunity. Ask them, do you like shoveling your snow? No, but I don't want to pay those big agencies all this money to do it. Oh, okay, well, how about if I did it for you? I'll charge you 30% less than the big agencies, whatever it is, you know, uh, and, and say, they might say, okay, yeah, let's see it. But you just have to, you know, you got to be driven enough. You got to get that snow cleaned up before they leave in the morning. Um, you, you can pull people's weeds. This is something that I did with, with uh, actually one of my neighbor friends. We had this idea for a little while. We only, we only did this like once or twice, but you, the same thing is mowing their lawns. Ask you, if you see weeds in their yard, if you see weeds in the landscaping, say, hey, can I pull your weeds for you? 50 bucks and we'll pull your weeds. It's just a, an easy way for you to just start generating some quick cash if you see that opportunity. Knocking on doors, selling stuff. You can uh, detail people's cars. Some, you know, if, if you're one of those people that's really organized, you like things to be clean, you like things to be organized, detailing cars is a super lucrative way for you to go. Now, if you really want to grow in that, you're going to have to start investing back into yourself and buy some nice products and you know things like that. But it really doesn't cost that much money to start detailing. Uh, I helped a good buddy of mine start a detailing business years ago. If you have a couple hundred bucks, you have everything you need to build a top notch. I mean, just like everything you need to go detail cars. And again, knock on people's doors. <laughs> Ask them um, if you want to detail, uh, if they want to get their car detailed. And even if you can't knock on everyone's door, you can print flyers. So I got in trouble for this one time because uh, I used to do wholesaling real estate. You don't got to worry about wholesaling real estate if you're a teenager. It's kind of a harder thing to do if you're a teenager because, uh, well, I mean, I guess you could. But <laughs> when I was wholesaling real estate, I was also doing this um, kind of real estate. I was trying to do real estate consulting. Tried. Uh, it didn't really work, but I tried. <laughs> and so I, I created this flyer where um, I pretty much wrote, you know, I am a real estate investor. I, I have done this and this deal. I've gotten these returns on my properties. I would love to help you invest in real estate. If you would like my um, advice, call me. And I, I was a real estate salesperson at the time too. So I put the number for my brokerage down. And so kind of made it look uh, official. I was working with uh, Keller Williams at the time. So I, I folded it up. And the thing is that the formal way to do that is you go on to like one of those um, mailer sites, you write up the letter, they print it, they package it, they put the stamp on it, and then they send it out. Now stamps, I don't even know what they cost anymore, but let's say they cost 50 cents for postage. They're also gonna charge you another 50 cents to a dollar to print out the letter, fold it, put it in an envelope. So altogether, that's gonna be a dollar, dollar 50 cents. So we'll, let's just call it a dollar fifty. I think it's even sometimes even more than that to send out these these letters. Mm-hmm. You want to send that to, let's say, a hundred houses. You're looking at one hundred fifty bucks. Want to send that to two, three, four, five hundred houses? It's gonna get very expensive. So I was like, well, I'm pretty sure I can get around this. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I can print these letters at my house, 
for next to nothing and I can buy uh, a bunch of envelopes for a few bucks and then me and my brother can drive around and just put these in people's mailboxes. Now, what I didn't know was you're not supposed to put it into the USPS box, that the thing you know where the, the mailman or woman puts their mail. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to put it in there. It's supposed to be stamped and delivered by a USPS agent. So what my brother and I did was we started driving around because I was trying to do this service and I was uh, putting these in. I, I, I packaged all the envelopes myself and then we started driving around and we put these flyers in everyone's USPS mail, kind of like we were mail drivers. I think we did like 100, and 100 or 150, something like that. And I didn't get any responses except one. Somebody called the brokerage and they filed a complaint saying that they're gonna, uh, they're threatening to sue me because I put a non-stamped envelope into their USPS box <laughs> because you're not supposed to put it in there, only the USPS people are. So moral of the story, is you can do flyers, just make sure you do it right. And yeah, you can be a hustler and you can just deliver the flyers yourself, run around, do it yourself, knock on doors. Just even if you don't know the rules, you'll learn, but just understand that there there might be some hiccups along the way, kind of like what I went in through to with my brother, but he's always kind of the guy that went along with me. I was like, hey, let's go do this. All right, let's do it. I got nothing else to do. So, <laughs> but all right. So that was number four, the labor that you can do. Number five, very relevant here is you can be a video editor for YouTube or TikTok. And the reason I brought this one up is because, well, my cousin is one of our big TikTok editors. Mm -hmm. He's a high schooler. And you're seeing a lot of growth in the video space. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Reels, Facebook videos. And a lot of people just don't know how to edit videos. And a lot of, I don't know how they learn, but a lot of young people know how to edit videos. I feel like, <laughs> I don't know what. I don't get it either. But yeah, I mean, it, it's just, <laughs> and they're good at it too. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like a lot of people just know how to, they know how to play video games. They know how social media works. They know how to edit videos. It's just like a weird thing that I've seen amongst a lot of people. But that's a real skill. Video editing is a real monetizable skill. So what you can do is, especially if you, you know, you're younger in high school, just, just start messaging TikTokers, YouTubers, Instagram people who have videos and just say, be honest, say, Hey, I'm a high schooler. I would love to make videos for you. I would love to edit your videos for you. I'm not even going to charge you. Let me try it out for two weeks. See if you like it. If you like it, then we can discuss, but if you don't like it, then no worries. Now you're going to say, well, I don't want to do it without making money. I get it. But you have to, I'm trying to get your foot in the door because if you go and say, Hey, I want a hundred dollars a video. I want $50 a video. YouTubers, TikTokers, they get those messages all the time. I mean, those messages come pretty often. So if you want to stand out and you're a video editor and you can go there and say, Hey, I'll do it for free for, even if you want to just do it for a week or but I'd say two weeks, talk to them, get a conversation going. Say, hey, I'll do it for free for you for two weeks. I'm just trying to start. I have a lot of experience with video editing. I don't have any clients, but I would love to show you my value. If you come in with that type of transparency and that type of honesty, you're going to get people to open your emails, your, your messages, and sit, respond because they're going to say, wow, this person seems very genuine. And they seem like they really want to provide value. And tell them like, hey, I love your content, right? Actually watch their stuff. If you can tell them that, that that's like something, you, it just helps. Hey, man or woman girl, whatever. Hey, I, I watched your content. I really like it. Um, I think that I could really add to your videos. I I've been doing video editing for a couple of years as a hobby. Now, um, I would love to just help you out with your video editing. I'm not even going to charge you. Let me just help you out. If you like it and you want to continue, then, Hey, you know, we can figure something out. And now all of a sudden you can just build a brand new income stream, editing YouTube videos and TikTok videos. And again, what you, you, you can use your age to your advantage, especially when it comes to TikToks, which is what my cousin did, or kind of, I, I pushed him in that direction was, do you know what people like about TikTok? Yeah, I'm on TikTok like five hours a day. <laughs> there you go. There's your answer, right? So you show them, Hey, I'm on TikTok all the time, or I'm on YouTube all the time. I watch a bunch of content like this, show the value. Show the value of your age. Don't make your age a limiting factor. Make it that beneficiary factor that my age is the reason why I will be able to succeed because I know exactly what people like. Right. And there you go. Video editing number five. Number six, 
this tutoring. So I'm going to start this with a little bit of a disclaimer because um, there, there's a couple things that you can do. Some of them I would not say are right, but I did do them. So when I was in high school, <laughs> um, I liked math. I, st I loved math. I still like math. And my <laughs> friends knew that. And so um, a couple of my friends on, uh, we'll call this a few instances, they paid me to do the math homework. <laughs> it was easy money for me. I loved it because I get some math practice. It's easy. I made like 20 bucks to do like, you know, one piece of paper I could do in like 20 minutes. Now, okay. Again, <laughs> got to give this disclaimer because I'm an attorney now, right? <laughs> uh, Dirty laundry is coming out today. Yeah, you you, you know, put flyers in people's mailboxes. You were doing people's homework. Well, you know, you're <laughs> young, you hustle. And, and that's the thing is, you know, when you're young, you don't know. Right. Because you haven't been, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And you just try. Uh, be careful, whatever you do. Um, I don't recommend doing people's homework. I'm not supposed to do that. But tutoring, you can do. Mm -hmm. Tutoring, if you're good in school, people will pay a lot of money to learn how to be good in school because people want to know how to be good in chemistry. People want to know how to be good in biology. People want to know how to be good at math. People will know, want to know how to be good at English. So if you're good at one of these topics, you can tutor it. Now, where do you do this tutoring? Well, you can do the tutoring within your school. You can do the tutoring through an organization in your area, or you can go online. There's a lot of new um, digital online tutoring sites out there that will connect you to someone else who needs help with their homework, who is in, in you, you pick the subjects, you show the subjects that you're good at, the things that you could teach on. If you get selected, well, now you can start tutoring people, those subjects, and earn money to do that. And, and like an, on an hourly basis, you make pretty good money. And again, it's just, you, you're just teaching the things that you already know that you're already good at. And if you can ramp it up a little bit more, I think people don't take the ACT anymore, right? Is that kind of faded yeah, out? Yeah, no, there's a different one now, yeah. They had the SAT now yeah. is popular. So when I was in high school, it was ACT was really popular. Mm -hmm. uh, but the same concept applies where people <laughs> want to know how to do good at the SAT. And uh, if you do good on the SAT, if you're one of those people like, you know, I'm studious, I did, you, you, you passed the SAT with flying colors, well, that is your proof of concept. You go to one of the learning, the agencies, whatever, you say, hey, I, got, I don't even know what a perfect score is or a good score is. And I, I don't know, I have no idea. But <laughs> he, you got a good score. You say, hey, I got this score on the SAT. Let me help teach people how I did it. The reason why I know this is because uh, when I was in college, I... I Thought I was, I was supposed to be a doctor. I, my parents told me I needed to be a doctor. So I took the MCAT, the Medical College Admission Test. And I took a, a class to help me get ready for that. And I, and I got to know the teacher. And <laughs> it's funny, I, this is the first time I've ever talked about this. But I started asking him, like, how much money do you make teaching this? And he was making, like, close to six figures teaching how to get into medical school. And he was saying that he said, you know, I'm thinking about not going to medical school and building my own business, teaching people how to get to medical school school. I was like, wow. He, could, he did really good. I mean, uh, he I almost got a perfect score on the MCAT. I, I forget the numbers. I'm <laughs> clearly so far out of this education. I got, but, you know, I remember he did really good. And, and uh, one of my cousins is also an, a genius, an older cousin. He got a perfect score on his MCAT. Wow. He, he did really well. And he was telling me that, yeah, he's like, I've been approached by a lot of uh, like the agency, the, what are the, like the teaching companies. Um, and they're paying me like, I think it was like 50, 60, 70 bucks an hour to teach how he did so good on the MCAT. And I was like, wow, man, that's a lot of money for like whatever. But so the, the whole purpose is, if you can teach something, if you can show that hey, you're good at some sort of uh, education, whether it's ACT or a class or the MCAT or whatever it is, there's a lot of value there. And if you can, you need the proof of concept to show, hey, I'm really good at algebra or calculus or history or whatever. Show that, and that there's something that you can monetize there by teaching it. Number seven, seven. 
<laughs> is we're gonna jump back into the video in just a second but before we do if you are interested in learning more about how you can start generating passive income our team put together an amazing guide that will walk you through how you can start generating passive income today you don't need a ton of money to start generating passive income what you need is the right financial education i mean there are some passive income strategies that don't cost you a lot and there are other passive income strategies that are completely passive that will cost you more money and this guide will walk you through the different passive income strategies that way you can understand what are the best ways to start generating passive income and what's the best strategy for you you can download our guide to start generating passive income for free when you sign up for our daily newsletter so if you want to learn more and see how you can start generating passive income i'll put the link to how you can download our free guide in the description below now let's jump back to the video this goes more into the business route but you can be a content creator create content for youtube podcast TikTok. I got that right. YouTube podcast. Yeah. yeah. You create content. I mean, look, Minority Mindset started off as a content, just channel YouTube. And now we've obviously grown to so much more. But when you are young, you can still create content. There's no restrictions on what you can do. And I have seen 16 year olds, 17 year olds make a lot of money off of YouTube. Oh, doing yeah. a lot. Of, I mean, I, to me, it's weird things. I don't understand what they're doing. But who cares? You're making money mm -hmm. and you're doing it on the side as a hobby and, and, and it, you start to build your own business that way. Even TikTok, this is the crazy thing. Now, obviously, like if you look at different monetizations, TikTok is different than the others, but you know, I have met do guys, they're like, they're 21, 22, not teenagers, but you know, young and they're making 10, 15, 20 grand a month off of their TikTok followings through sponsorships and stuff because they've figured out how to go viral. And if you're already like, here's the thing, right? You, you got to understand the difference between the consumer mindset and the producer mindset. The consumer mindset is consume, consume, consume. Mm -hmm. I want nice clothes. I, I buy Lululemon. I want nice stuff. I buy Apple. I want to go. Uh, you, you're, you're buying the stuff. The producer mindset is I want to own the business of selling the stuff. So I want to own shares of Lululemon. I want to own shares of Apple. I want to own shares of Amazon. Like that, that's what the producer mindset is. But that also comes into content because what, what do most people do? They consume content. I'm consuming podcasts. I'm consuming YouTube videos. I'm consu you, you're consuming all this stuff. And if your life is just you consuming, I mean, you can realize, hey, I could be a producer too. So instead of you just consuming, now you become that producer of you, you start creating content and you might say, Oh, but it's so saturated. There are so many people already doing this. Yes. But there's also a lot of people watching and that <laughs> is growing. And there's always people looking for more and something else and something new. And the demand is still growing. Like, like look at how fast TikTok blew up. And YouTube, man, like YouTube is, is really still in its infancy because YouTube is going to take over TV. Like, YouTube is going to be the way people watch TV. People are already ditching cable and uh, like that, that we're just starting that trend. Like, like TV is going to be YouTube and then you're going to have Netflix, Hulu and all that. But like Netflix's biggest competitor is not Hulu or Disney Plus. It's, Net, it's YouTube because people love the idea of watching creators. So it's another opportunity. There's no age limit to how old or young you have to be to start YouTube. You just have to be genuine and authentic in you and figure out what you like. Maybe you talk about you're, you're educating something you know, or, or you're having fun with your friends or you're playing games or you know, there's really anything, like whatever your interests are, there's opportunity there on YouTube. Number eight, <laughs> teach <laughs> English. Oh, and this, this one's interesting because uh, I, I know the value of this because I have a lot of family members that don't speak English and people overseas really want to uh, learn how to speak English and they are willing to spend money, good money to learn how to speak English. And you, know, you might be thinking, oh, how am I going to find somebody in India to teach them English? <laughs> well, there's, there's the internet, right? I mean, there's, there's, there's companies that are doing this where you can go and just talk to people in English. Like if you, if you understand this video, I'm assuming that you speak English and you understand English. You just have to go and talk to people in English and they will pay you. I think it's like, I've seen one per minute. There was a site that was called, uh, I wrote it down, Cambly, C-A-M-B-L-Y.com, where they pay you per minute just to talk to somebody. 
And it's, it's, it's not difficult, but it's an opportunity for you to now help somebody learn English, a very valuable skill, a useful skill, and you already know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's another way for you to start monetizing things that you already know how to do. It's just, where do you go? I mean, I don't know much about Cambly. I've never used it. I didn't, I didn't really do much research on it. That was just one of the things that someone told me about, and that was the first one that popped up. But there's a lot of them out there mm -hmm. that teaching somebody English. And if you know how to speak English, you can teach somebody. Or that. other languages for that matter. Oh, too, yeah. I mean. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you can speak other, vice versa. Right. Everyone wants to learn. Mm -hmm. Number nine, being a freelancer. So if you have any sort of <clears throat> skill, digital skill, you're, you know how to edit photos. You know how to write. You can be a voiceover artist. If you know how to do graphic design, you can be a freelancer, work for other companies or people that need this type of work done, provide that service, and get paid. The advantage of freelancing is you can do it on your own time, from your own home, on your own schedule. Like we have a bunch of freelancers that work uh, for Minority Mindset. We don't know where they live. Well, I guess we do if we, if we needed to, but like mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't know where their home is. We don't care where they work. We don't really care what time they work. We give them deadlines. Hey, this work has to be done by Wednesday at 5 p.m., but they can work on it whenever they want, whether it's the weekend, evening, early morning, midday. It doesn't matter as long as the work is done on time. So if you have some sort of skill, you know, the photo editing, graphic design, video editing, this can be an opportunity for you to monetize it through freelancing. And there are so many sites out there. I mean, Upwork and Fiverr are probably the two biggest right now. And again, it's just places you go there and you create a profile with what your skills are, what your, what your talents are. And people and businesses that are looking for that will post their jobs and maybe they find you or you can then apply or bid for jobs. And it's an opportunity. And again, just be honest. Mm -hmm. Be honest. Like, like I can't emphasize this enough. The key, if you really want to grow fast, is just be honest. Say, hey, I'm in high school. I know I don't have a lot of reviews on my profile, but I've been doing this for years. I would love to prove my value. And if you really want to you know, get your foot in the door, say, I'll even do it for free for a week. <laughs> like, it's just, how do you differentiate yourself? And that is the easiest way to do that if you, if you just offer something, give people a taste of what you can do and say, hey, I'll do it for free for a week or two weeks. I'll, I'll, I'll do a free test. I'll do a free sample. Show them the value. And if you can do that, now you're differentiating yourself. Because a lot of people don't want to do that. They say, oh, I, I'm too good to be doing these free samples. Well, okay, well, that's them. You're trying to build your clientele. Right. Go there and offer something. Give people a taste of what you can do. And if they like it, well, now all of a sudden you start building these new clients. A lot of those sites, too, allow you to have, like, certifications and kind of take little tests to show these businesses or anyone looking to hire you that you know what you're talking about. Exactly. Exactly. And so it's just you keep expanding upon it. You, get, you start, get your foot in the door, and you keep building upon mm -hmm. it. And number 10, flip things. Mm. So I... I did a little bit of this, but I've, I've seen a lot of people and I've heard of a lot of people doing this, which is why I wanted to mention this as number 10. So the thing that I have done in terms of flipping is I have purchased products overseas from China and Alibaba, bought them. Uh, you could, you could buy them in smaller bulk, but buy them or even AliExpress, you can buy them in smaller orders, buy them. And then you try to flip them here, whether it's on Amazon or eBay or Craigslist or, or to people, you know, so that's kind of what I've done. I, I did that with like phone accessories. But nowadays, like there's a lot of people flipping a lot of other stuff like shoes. Mm -hmm. This has been really popular. I've never flipped shoes. I don't know the shoe market, <laughs> but I know people who have made or are making a lot of money doing this. And so if you're involved in that space, like you know what shoes are worth something, this is an opportunity for you mm -hmm. because you know what people like. And if you know that, chances are you probably have like the plugs. You know who to go to to get the shoes or where to go to get the shoes or whatever it is. And then you, you buy them or whatever price and, and you sell them for the higher price. Is it risky? Yeah, absolutely. But again, it's, it's what market do you know? And, and if you're young and you're in that shoe, you're into shoes, that's a huge industry. I remember one of my friends or a friend of a friend, his room used to be stacked with these shoe boxes because like 
I don't, I don't even remember what they were. I, I don't know much about shoes, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sound really dumb if I say it wrong. But, like, <laughs> he just had, like, uh, he knew, like, what was coming out. And he would, like, have people to go in and, and get the shoes as soon as they came out. Then they, like, became limited edition. Like, you couldn't get them anymore. And then all of a sudden, he was able to sell these shoes for, like, twice what he bought them for. So he's, like, doubling his money very quickly selling these shoes. And, and there's just so much stuff that you can flip. I know people talk about, like, Pokemon cards. People talk I, again. I, I know nothing about it. I don't own any Pokemon cards, but there are things that you know in your area that people like, that people want, that people are willing to pay for. And and if you're a consumer, again, it's that okay. I, I already know this. How do you not become the producer? So it's flipping that mindset. Okay. I'm already spending a lot of money here. If I am, I know other people probably are too. And now you already know the business if you're a consumer. Now it's how do you become a producer? Now all of those are amazing ways for teenagers to make money. But what I didn't hear you say was go fill out an application for Walmart or McDonald's. <laughs> I mean, Are those bad ways to make money? Uh, it's a way to make money. There's nothing wrong with that. You're going to learn more. I mean, you're gonna, you'll, you'll learn a lot there too. But yeah, I mean, if you want to go and get a job, that's fine. You know, I, I did. I used to work for Auntie Anne's pretzels. <laughs> we made the best pretzels. I they mean, were good. They were good. Uh, in terms of tangible skills, I could probably still flip a pretzel. But <laughs> um, besides that, not much else. But the side hustles that I did, they teach you t- more tangible skills, I would say, um, mm-hmm. in the sense of you learn how to build something on your own. But if you hate that idea of building something on your own, sh- sure, go out and get a job. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with working a job. There's no shame in that. But it's just it's you don't have the same flexibility, you don't have the same creativity, and you don't have the same control. Do you really need that in order to make money? What a job? No, there's that kind of creativity and that yeah. kind of skills. I mean, do you really need that in order to make money? I think you do. If if you're not doing it through a job, it, it's not any of the things that we talked about. None of them are easy, mm-hmm. but they're not impossible. But if you want to be able to do it, yeah, you have to be able to have the creativity. You have to be willing to take that kind of risk. You don't really, for me at least, when I was younger, you don't think of it as risk because like it's just like something you're doing. But you have to kind of have the appetite for willing to, to, to just try things and, and be dumb enough to like just go and do things without worrying about it. And so, but if you're not willing to do that, then yeah, I mean, you, you, maybe a job is a better way to go for you. It is a big risk because I know a lot of parents, my parents included, were like, focus on school. You yeah. got to do school and don't waste your time doing anything else. There was a lot of parents out there and a lot of friends that I had that basically said, don't do anything to make money right now. Focus on school yeah. because that's where the money is going to be later on in life. What I, do you think about that? Well, I, I'm in the same boat. And uh, my parents, you know, like I said, they wanted me to be a doctor. Mm-hmm. And anything that was not related to me becoming a doctor was a waste of time. Even mm-hmm. sports. I had to fight my parents to play football in high school. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I, I can't recommend what to do. I'll tell you what I did. Again, I don't know if it's the best advice or not. Mm-hmm. Parents are going to hate me for talking about this. But, you know, it's, it's the reality is, is what I did. I lived two lives. I, I did these side hustles in secret. My parents didn't wow. know that I was doing it. Um, I, I had like the academic desperate, the person that's going to school, the person that's, that's working hard to like get the good grade so I can look, uh, you know, I thought I was going to go to medical school. And then you had the entrepreneur desperate. When I was in high school, you know, I talked about working at weddings. I grew that into my, my first business. I, I started hosting teen parties when I was in school. It's a little bit harder. That's why I didn't mention that here because that's not like the first thing you do. That's kind of like you establish your contacts. You, you, you meet some people. You, that's when you can start doing that. But I started doing that in high school. My junior and senior year, I was hosting teen parties. And then I started hosting, you know, I built that into my event planning company when I was in college. But that was all in secret. My parents didn't know that I had an event planning company when I was in college. I did this, like, on the side, in secret. And that's the thing. Is you're right. You're, you're going to face criticism. You're, or you might, rather. Some parents are very cool with it. They love when their kids do that. But if your parents are, are saying, no, focus on school, sometimes your parents just don't understand. They don't get it, right? And you have to be willing to know what it is that you want, be willing to understand that, hey, I'm not doing something bad, and go out and try it. And, you know, it's easier, I, I, I would say, if, if your parents approve of it. But, hey, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, if you if you want to make some money, sometimes your parents just don't get it. They, they want to do what's best for you, but sometimes what they think is best for you isn't actually best for you. Right. <laughs> and with that, 
Ed, is it time? It's time. We concluded another Guac Talk. I appreciate it. If you want to see more of Nate, check out the Minority Mindset News channel. He's posting videos every single day and sometimes multiple times multiple a day. Multiple times, yeah. On what's going on in the top finance and business news. His videos are amazing. If you have not seen his videos yet, you need to go right now. Check out the Minority Mindset News channel and subscribe. This is Guaki. I am Jaspreet Singh, and this was another episode of Guac Talk. If you do have the entrepreneurial mindset, it is much more accessible to start a business nowadays than ever before, thanks to the internet, because now you can start a business with pretty much no money. I mean, you can start a blog, you can start a YouTube channel, you can start a podcast, and all these things can now funnel leads and revenue into your business, which then you can reinvest to create your own product.